So here's another great opportunity to film another edition of the Baseline Drive. It's been quite some time. I've had a lot of conversations with coaches and workshop attendees recently about managing mistakes and, and how you handle getting over mistakes and learning from mistakes. And you know, they always say it's not the mistake, it's how you respond to it. You know, there's a stimulus, there's a response, and you can either take the high road or you can take the low road. Look at something as a challenge and an opportunity or woe is me, look at what's just gone wrong. Um, so how do you handle those mistakes? I mean, I think that uh, anytime there's a mistake or a setback or a failure or a loss, uh, getting over it is, is important so that you get, can move on to the next thing. And that's not just, you know, in sports, that's, that's in life too. Uh, there are mistakes of commission, right? Mistakes that you make. Uh, and then things that happen because of omission, right? Things that you don't do. Uh, I think a lot of times uh, we face that in coaching. You know, we shoulda, coulda, woulda done this. Uh, so you got to evaluate those things and manage that so that you learn from it and don't make the same mistake the next time. I know one of the mistakes that I often found myself doing with, uh, with teams and players is I would, uh, I would continue to rely on what I thought was potential and uh, sometimes stick with a player a little bit too long. Uh, because I saw potential in what it was that, that they were doing and I had this vision in my head maybe of what they could become uh, and it's better to err on that side and give people as many opportunities as possible but sometimes you know you spend so much time as a coach waiting on potential that you miss out an opportunity for maybe somebody else that's earning an, uh, a chance to play or earning more playing time or earning a spot uh, so uh, you got to look at production but you also have to look at the effort that those players are making in order to improve and get better at what they're doing and if they slip back and make the same old mistakes over and over again then, you know, kind of it's, it's time to evaluate. Maybe it's time to, you know, move on and go somewhere else um, with your lineup. But when a player makes a mistake, I guess when we make mistakes in life or we have those setbacks or failures, there are some things that have to happen in order for us to manage that mistake. I mean, if we're only looking at mistakes through... Uh, through a result-oriented, ego-searching uh, method, then mistakes are bad. All right, mistakes help you lose. Mistakes are just a bad look. But if we're worried about getting better and mastery and personal excellence, then uh, it's not so much the result. I mean, PCA, we talk about the acronym ELM, E-L-M, effort, learning, and I like to say mistake management. We talk about mistakes being okay, but all, all mistakes aren't okay, right? Sometimes, you know, repeated mistakes uh, are not okay because there hasn't been the learning. So it's not really the mistake as much as it is that that person hasn't learned yet um, or maybe isn't putting in the effort to make that change, whether it's a physical effort or a, or a mental effort, right? Focus is important as well. So mental, mental effort is just as important as the physical effort. Uh, effort isn't just running around getting sweaty. Uh, it's a focus and a preparedness as well. So what do kids need? What do people need when, when they have a setback failure or a mistake? Um, I think the first thing they need to do is they need to recognize that a mistake was made. And as a leader, or as a coach, or as a friend, 
right? If somebody recognizes that mistake, then there's no need to pile on, right? They know that they made a mistake. You don't have to let them know that they made a mistake unless they refuse to change and manage that mistake to hopefully prevent it next time so that there aren't repeated mistakes. Um, and that refusal becomes a problem. So you gotta deal with that. And maybe that's the time when you help them recognize that they made a mistake. Um, and it might take a long time for get them to recognize that they're making the same mistake because they think their way is what they're comfortable with, right? Coach, I've always done it this way. Well, it's not working. So maybe you should try it a different way. Maybe not my way, but maybe a different way. Um, so they need to recognize they made a mistake, but then they need that reassurance that, you know, that, that the mistake is okay in the sense that you still believe in them and you still trust them and you still love them and care for them and want to see them get better. You know, they need that reassurance. Players need that reassurance, not only from the coach, but from their teammates and from their parents. <coughs> and, uh, and they need a little bit of re-instruction sometimes, right? And I say re-instruction because if you haven't instructed them already, it's not really a mistake. They just don't know it yet. So sometimes you have to remind them or re-instruct them uh, in what it is that they're they're trying to do and how can, they can they can get a little bit better from it. Uh, but the important thing is uh, how they remember that mistake or setback. Right? They should forget the part that makes them afraid of making that mistake again. So you got to help them get over the mistake so that there's not fear. Um, but they need to remember the part of the mistake that they can learn from so that they don't make it again and they don't make repeated mistakes. Uh, and, and that's when you're really managing mistakes, when all of those things, uh, all of those things occur. Because the, at that point, the only thing that's really important is getting ready for the next play. Uh, we talk to people about flushing mistakes. Right? You imagine that that mistake is down the drain and it's gone and uh, you get over it. I was having a conversation with a, a player who I've worked with for a number of years and he's got a little trouble with failure and uh, getting over mistakes and he's been getting better, but we we're having a conversation one day and he said, coach, I try to flush mistakes and sometimes they're just too big and it's too much. And there are going to be people like that. There are going to be players like that that you got to continue to work with over and over again and help them manage that mistake and help them flush it and get over it. So I asked the player, I says, well, what do you do when, you know, there's, there's too much and you can't get over it? And he said, well, sometimes you got to flush twice. And we had a good laugh. We blushed a little bit. Um, but it was baseball season. And what I did for him was the next game, we came to the game with a, a plunger. And when it was really hard to flush mistakes, he needed to go to the plunger and do whatever he needed to do, say whatever he needed to say to get his mind right before he could re-enter competition, go sit with the team, go back onto the field or, or whatever. So um, sometimes you gotta do extra work to plunge that mistake and um, and coaches, you know, friends that are trying to help people through mistakes, sometimes you're the plumber, right? And sometimes you got to do your best to, uh, to unclog that mistake and, uh, and try to move people forward and help them manage that mistake, help them learn so that they can uh, improve from that and not go through the feeling of dealing with repeated mistakes um, because those are those are painful so uh, so help people manage mistakes help them flush it plunge it when you need to uh, get them ready to move on to the next phase and uh, 
whatever you do, be great. Coach Loke, out.